Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mafia and Gangsters video. I haven't done one of these in a while. It's been actually about maybe five, six months or so. So I thought I would mix another one of these in here. This one having to do with yet another throwback involving my encounters video. So I've done maybe two or three of these on the Mafia and Gangsters side. And the idea is I just find random encounters that people have stated that they've had with the mafia. So everyday normal people, there they are doing their everyday lives. And all of a sudden, they have someone from the mafia in front of them. So in this case, it comes from a website called Cora.com. I'll include a few of those here. And then I'll probably do another one as well featuring some more. Let me know though what you guys think as far as the comments. See if you want me to do any more of these two. And I'll be happy to give my own thoughts and opinions as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's talk about this more more encounters associated with the mafia. So the first one comes from a guy by the name of Gene Nelson, and here's what he stated. During my brief stint as a car salesman, we sold a Lexus SUV to a couple of Russian fellows from up north. This happened in Savannah, Georgia. They arrive reasonably attired and go into the finance and insurance lady's office to do the paperwork to buy the vehicle. The price was in and around the area of $24,000. About five minutes later, she came out of her office freaking out because they just opened the briefcase of cash on her desk and she was absolutely certain they were gangsters. She was petrified. To calm her down, I pointed out that they were businessmen handling a business transaction. Treat them as such and make sure they know that a cash sale over $10,000 has to be reported to the government. Sale done, they were happy, all's well. And that's it. That's everything that the user mentioned here. So interesting, in this case, we had a mafia encounter at a dealership. One would think one would normally not think about that situation, but when you analyze it, what do gangsters drive, right? They drive those nice luxury type cars. So why not essentially go to a dealership and go through this type of transaction? And it makes sense, at least in their world, that it would all be cash. And yes, it would have to be reported. So who knows, somewhere in that dealership, in their papers, they have an actual mafia transaction. The next one comes from a user by the name of Mickey S. And then here's what she stated. Not I personally, but a very dear friend of mine was. Her daughter was something of a wild child and ended up marrying a young member of the mafia. My friend was not the fanciful type and not at all given to premonitions. But at one point, she said she started to get a very bad feeling and became extremely worried about her daughter and infant grandson. She nagged and nagged at her daughter to come and stay with her for a few weeks, secretly hoping to make it a permanent arrangement. Her daughter finally gave in and agreed. A few days later, after she moved in with her mother, she became concerned because her husband hadn't called. She went back to their house and found her husband dead on the floor, along with a woman he had hired to do the bookkeeping for his various enterprises while his wife was away. They both had been shot in the back of the head. Clearly, he had accept somebody of significance and the bookkeeper was collateral damage. If my friend hadn't really dug her heels in and persuaded her daughter to come home with her, both her daughter and infant grandson would have been there and her daughter at least would have been dead and quite possibly her grandson as well. And then that's it. That's everything that Mickey S. mentioned in their encounter. So here in this case, it didn't directly happen to her, but it happened to uh, her friend's daughter. And here they had that, I guess, wedding that was kind of done with someone in the mafia, but kind of like it was, you know, why are they doing this? But they still move forward family was worried, especially the mother. And then she had that weird sixth sense that allowed her to kind of tell her daughter, hey, come home. And then that way you'll be able to be safe, whatever that premonition was. And it turns out it ended up being true because it looks like her mafia husband, the daughter's mafia husband, had crossed somebody incorrectly. And then it ended up being found dead with the poor bookkeeper as well as collateral damage. But nothing happened to the daughter because of the actions associated with that woman, the one with the premonition. So interesting stuff there. Next one comes from a lady by the name of Bailey Lamar. 
And this is what they stated. I live in Las Vegas, so the short answer is yes. But the long answer is that they do not go by mafia or mob or anything like that anymore. So while I've technically never seen the mafia, I have witnessed the head of an organized crime group. This happened some time ago. The day before my birthday, I was getting my nails done at my regular place. They were really popular and always booked solid. So when the door opened behind me, a deep, gruff, gruff voice said, Boss wants a clear manicure. I didn't think anything of it. I figured as usual, S, the owner, would wave them away and say his usual appointment only. Sorry. Instead, the usually uber stoic man next to me hurried to get up from his station. Of course, he can sit now is what he said. I started to look over, interested in who was so important that they'd get to knock any other appointments out of the way. But V squeezed my hand and gave me a look over her mask. I shrugged and she shook her head so fast I almost didn't notice, but enough to let me know to not move. And so the chair creaked next to me as this person, whoever, this mafia person, sat down. Just clear polish, S asked, setting out the towel. Yes, this was the deepest voice I ever heard in my entire life. All I could see from my position was the table. So I saw when he laid his hands out, his hands looked strong with rings covering each one. Not gaudy, but clearly expensive. Is this a special occasion? It's been a while, as I said to him. The man shifted in his seat, leaning back. It's my daughter's wedding tomorrow. Well, maybe you can bring your daughter here and we can do her nails too. Because I get nervous in tense situations and I've always been a smart blank, I couldn't help myself. And so to S, I said, you come to me on this day on my daughter's wedding and ask me for a favor? Nobody moved. V just stared at me, her eyes huge. Slowly, the man next to me turned to look at me. He didn't look as scary as you'd imagine, but there was something about him, something intimidating, despite the relaxed look on his face, like he could kill you without even blinking. That's funny, he said, flashing his extremely white teeth at me. You're funny. I shrugged. I'm a comedian in my free time. He nodded like that made sense to him, and slowly, VNS started doing our nails again. Now that I'd opened up the floodgates, the man was ready to talk. How old are you? It's my 21st birthday tomorrow, I said, picking up one hand to show off the extremely sparkly nails. Huh, I remember when my daughter was 21, I made my boys follow her around the whole night to make sure she didn't get into too much trouble. And so I said, oh, my boyfriend is going to keep me on a short leash tonight so I don't run off. That's good, that's good. It's dangerous here, you know. I know, I said somberly. We chatted a bit more, and then when I got up to leave, he waved the man standing in the corner of the shop forward. Spud, pay for her. And I said, no, no, you don't have to, shaking my head as I dug in my purse for my wallet. He held up a hand to stop me. Don't. I've never been one to be told what to do, but I immediately stopped. We're going to pay for you, he said seriously. Think of it as your first birthday present, all right? All right, I said, smiling now. Thank you. Spud, six foot seven inches of a huge man and not at all deserving of the name Spud, stepped up to pay for me. I lingered at the door awkwardly. Thanks a lot, really. Thank you. Don't worry about it, he grinned, unless I need a favor. I left and that was that. A weird dude, I thought, but nice. A few months, maybe even a year later, I was watching the news when I saw him again. The headline froze me. Head of organized crime being arrested under suspicion of dot dot dot. It was his face. The man from the shop, the one that had paid for my nails. I knew that immediately. So he was a head of an organized crime ring. I sat and I listened, dumbstruck to the list of offenses his group was allegedly responsible for. I won't document them here since I'm no snitch and mama again ain't raised no fool. I don't need any crime leaders mad at me for spilling their info on core, but they were as terrifying as you'd imagine. All I could picture though was the nice man sitting next to me that paid for my nails as a birthday present. A few weeks after I saw that coverage, another one popped up. Crime Lord case dismissed by judge after technicality. And then that's it. That's everything that the user Bailey Lamar mentioned within her uh, long encounter here. So interesting stuff. A lot of things to talk about there. For starters, Las Vegas, one would think that the mob is not there anymore, but they are. I'm sure that they're out there still somewhere controlling things a little bit behind the scene, not necessarily like the casinos, but maybe 
some other underground type stuff. I heard about that with and one of the tours I took in Las Vegas about the mafia as well. They stated that they're still out there somewhere, but again, just not in the forefront, not like in the past. And then also, that is true as far as the nails. The mafia guys, especially the more well-groomed ones, do like they do like having their nails done. They want to make sure that they look well, that they're presented well, always clean shaven, always with a nice haircut, and that includes having a nice set of nails. So here you have this unique encounter with Bailey and this mafia guy who ended up being the head of an organized crime there. And then they were just having that cordial encounter, that cordial conversation after she in turn broke the ice when it came to the uh, upfront greeting. But that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys and gals think. If you want me to do any more of these or what your thoughts are, post those comments below. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.